I'm Kath, my channel is Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me for my latest video, which is all about Nina Lee patterns. And this video is part of a series that I started much earlier this year and I've recently come back to and done a couple more videos in this series, where I basically pick a sewing pattern company that I like and where I've made a few of their patterns. And I do a review of the patterns I've made and share my makes and talk about fabrics I've chosen, sizing and adjustments and how wearable I found the patterns and how I found the patterns to sew up. So a full review of each pattern and I usually also pick a few patterns by that pattern company that I haven't yet made and share why I'd like to make them or why I perhaps won't be going for those patterns. So that is my plan in this video. It's all about the sewing pattern company Nina Lee which is a pattern company I really like. I've got a little pile of their patterns here ready to talk about. I've got my makes as well to share but I'll kick off this video like I usually do in this series with just a little bit of general information about Nina Lee because I always think it's interesting to find out a bit of the background about the pattern company. So Nina Lee is an independent pattern company and until about 18 months ago they were based in London which is quite local to me um, and it had a very London vibe to all the patterns. They were all named after places in London which was quite cool and also the pattern envelopes, the paper pattern envelopes were sort of um, decorated with pictures of London to give the whole vibe to each of the patterns. But about 18 months ago or so Nina Lee relocated to um, America, to California and she's now released um, one new pattern that has a California sort of West Coast vibe to it. So the vibe of the pattern company has changed a bit recently, which is really interesting to see what direction it'll go in going forward. And going forward, Nina Lee will only be releasing their patterns in PDF format. They've confirmed they won't be releasing any more paper patterns. They did release all of the London patterns, I think, in paper pattern format. And there are still quite a few copies of the paper patterns still available to be found online with online fabric shops. So if you do like a paper pattern, it's worth getting hold of her older London patterns sooner rather than later before those paper patterns run out because I don't think she's producing any more of those. And in terms of sizing, all of the newer Nina Lee patterns are released in two size ranges. There is a UK 6 to 20 range, which I think is based on a B cup, and then a 16 to 28 range, again in UK sizing, which is based on a D cup. And that takes the range up to the largest size, which is for bust 54 inches, waist 47 inches, and hips 57 inches. There are a few of her older patterns that are only available in the UK 6 to 20 range. And when I'm talking about the patterns I've sewn, I'll mention which range um, each of them is available in. So yeah, in this video, I'm going to talk all about all of my Nina Lee makes and how I found each of the patterns. I've got all of the makes ready to share here and I'll put up some photographs too as I go along. So let's get started. So I thought I'd kick this video off by talking about the first Nina Lee sewing pattern I tried. And I sewed this one up when I was fairly new to sewing. And I really enjoyed sewing it then and really enjoyed the pattern and I still love it now. And I've got a few versions of this pattern now and I reach them all regularly, particularly when the weather gets cooler here. I think they're perfect for the winter months. And the pattern is this one here. It is the South Bank sweater and sweater dress pattern. And actually this is only um, one of my Nina Lee patterns I have in PDF format because I do love the paper envelopes with the illustrations on. So I don't know why I got this one in PDF format. I'm a bit disappointed I don't have it in paper version, but never mind. I'll show you the line drawing. So it's a sweater and sweater dress pattern designed for knit fabrics. And there are three different versions you can make. They all have this um, funnel neck and a slightly dropped shoulder and cuffs um, on the arms. And then version one is a sweater dress with a hem band. Version two is designed more to be like a top, a kind of classic sort of um, um sort of funnel neck top. You can either make it as more of a sweater if you make it in more of a thick um, knit fabric or you can make it as more of a layering piece like a sort of polar neck type top if you make it in a drapier lighter weight jersey like a viscose jersey or a cotton jersey I guess. And then version three is a cropped version. Um, so yeah they're all really nice versions I've made all three versions actually and this pattern is available in the full Nina Lee size range from UK 6 up to UK 28 and it comes together really nicely and I think it's a great pattern if you're fairly new to sewing with knit fabrics because you don't have to worry about getting the neckband to lay flat like you do on some knit tops because it's a stand-up neckline and it goes in really nicely so it's a really nice speedy and simple sew this one I find and really cozy to wear too. 
So I've got a few versions to share with you of the South Bank sweater that I've made. And the first version is the one I'm wearing today, um, which I really love. And I made this one as kind of like version two, but I added the hem band on the bottom to make it a bit more like a sweater rather than a top. And I made it in this really lovely fabric, which is a kind of jacquard knit fabric. I got it a long time ago from Guthrie Garney. I don't think it'll probably still be in stock there anymore, but it's got kind of like a sort of um, marley effect to the fabric and these cute stars on. It's quite substantial. It's not the stretchiest of um, knit fabrics. Um, and I, just, I really love it. I like the prints on it. I did make a little mistake, which you might have spotted or you might not, when I put on the, um, the neck. I realised I got the stars the other way up on the neck band that I have on the rest of the jumper, but I don't think it's too noticeable. It wasn't really worth unpicking it. But as you can see, the collar is quite nice and loose. It's not a restrictive tight collar. The sleeves, I think I might have lengthened slightly so they're nice and long and cosy on me. And I'll stand up a bit so you can see what it looks like with the hem band added on the bottom. And in terms of sizing on this, and I think on all the versions of the South Bank sweater I've made, I've always gone for the UK size 8. So my measurements are um, bust 32, waist 26 and hips 36. And that puts me at a size 6 on the bust for Nina Lee patterns and a size 8 on the waist and hips. But I've always gone for the straight size 8 because I think when I looked at the finished garment measurements on this pattern, there wasn't a huge amount of room in the size 6, just I think an inch around the bust on my bust size. And I've always wanted to wear the South Bank sweater as quite a nice snuggly piece to layer on top of other things. So I've always wanted a bit more room to it. So I never bothered grading. I've just gone for the straight size 8, which is slightly larger on the bust, but it isn't really super roomy on the bust even so. I do find on the whole, Nina Lee patterns come up on the fitted side, so the size eight's always worked well for me. So this is my first version, the one I'm wearing today, and I'll pop a picture up of me wearing it today. I've just got it on with a pair of ready-to-wear jeans, but I'll show you my other versions now. I have made um, two versions of the dress, and they're a little bit different to each other. The first version of the dress I made is in this really lovely Mind the Maker fabric. Um, I can't remember what the fabric is called, but it's, it's kind of like a quilted fabric. When you cut it, there's like a layer of, um, yeah, kind of quilted sort of wadding inside it almost. It's really, really cosy. It's got this lovely um, zigzag print on it. I'll try and find this fabric in stock somewhere online, and if I can, I'll link it down below. I'm sure it is in stock somewhere. Um, but yeah, it's really cute, and I got it in this really lovely sort of deep red colour. So this is my first version of the South Bank. And I was a bit concerned with the sweater dress. It might come up a little bit short because I'd seen it coming up quite short um, on the other people online. So I lengthened this version and it ended up and coming up on the long side once I'd lengthened it. But I actually quite like this, that, because um, it's really nice and cosy and comfy, particularly if I'm around the house, I want to stay really cosy. I'll pop this on with a pair of leggings and it keeps me really nice and warm. And I'll try and find a picture so you can see how it looks on. And I added on pockets for this version because there are optional pockets that you can add inseam pockets into version one. And I added pockets into this version and I quite like them. But I've seen a lot of people saying they omit the pockets just because it adds quite a lot of bulk around the hips. But for this version, I wanted quite like a slouchy, oversized version. So I don't really mind the added bulk around the hips of the pockets. I don't really mind them being there. So that is my first version of the um, sweater dress I made. For the second version, I decided to try something a bit different. I decided to go shorter on the hem, so I didn't lengthen it this time. And I didn't add the pockets, and I went for a slightly more sort of fitted look to it. So I think I maybe, maybe I did on this one. I'm not sure if I graded out on that one, I made it a bit larger. But this one's a little bit more fitted, my second version. And it's in this really lovely fleece back sweatshirt fabric. And you can see it's all fleece on the inside, and it's a navy blue colour, and it's got these little flecks on it. And this is a Cozy Colours and um, fleece back sweatshirt. And it's available, I think, I often see it in the winter months, popping up to buy on a lot of online fabric shops. So if I can find the navy colour online somewhere, I will link it down below. I know Guthrie and Garney had a few different colours in stock because it comes in lots of different colours, this fabric. Um, I've got this colour, a black colour, and also a red colour. But it's quite nice, actually, sweater knit, sort of sweatshirt fabric because it's not too, too thick. So it's quite quite good for layering without ending up getting too hot, particularly when you're wearing a sweater dress. If you're out and about, you can't really take that off. So it's not too heavyweight for a sweater dress, which is quite nice because it keeps you cosy, but not overheated. Um, so yeah, this is my second version. I went a little bit shorter on the length. It's got the hem band on the bottom and no pockets. And I'll put a picture of me wearing this one too, so you can see what this one looks like on. I generally went for a little bit more of a snugger fitted look for this one. But they're both really nice. Um, I really enjoy wearing them. They're perfect for colder weather, nice and snuggly. So those are my two version ones. And then I've also made 
um, a couple of versions of the cropped version 3 here. And I really, really love this version because I find it such a handy jumper for layering over all sorts of things, dresses, skirts. I find it sits quite nicely just where my high-waisted skirts finish. So it's quite a nice complement for a high-waisted skirt. So I find my two um, crop versions get a lot of wear because I can just pull them on over things to keep me a bit cosy. So my first crop version is here. It's a bit wrinkled, apologies. And I made it using offcuts from my South Bank dress, the navy South Bank dress. So it's the same um, fleece back sweatshirting in a navy blue, the cosy colours fleece back sweatshirting. And it doesn't need too much fabric, this short version, so it's perfect um, if you've got a smaller piece of fabric to squeeze it out of, because it's very cropped. And then my second version is pretty similar to my first version. I loved my first version so much, I went ahead and got some of the black um, Cozy Colours fleece back sweatshirting, again, which has got the flex in. I made a black version, again, it's a little bit cropped. Um, and the only adjustment I made on these versions was to lengthen the arms slightly. Other than that, I kept it just as per the pattern. I find it sews up really nicely. Oh, and I'll put up a picture so you can see how the crop version looks on me too. But I love the South Bank sweater. I'm sure I'll make more in the future. It's really comfy to wear. I like that the neckline's not too restrictive and tight. It's just nice and cosy. The drop shoulder, I think, sits at a nice place. And it sews up really nicely too. So what's not to like? <laughs> So the next Nina Lee pattern I wanted to talk about is the second Nina Lee pattern that I tried. And I can remember the order in which I tried each of my Nina Lee patterns the first time. So I thought I'd go through them in that order in this video. And the second pattern I tried is this one here, which is the Camden pinafore and skirt pattern. This is one of the older Nina Lee patterns and it's only available in the UK 6 to 20 range, at least at the moment. So the largest size is the UK 20, which is designed for a bust 46 inches, waist 38 inches and hips 47 and a half inches. It's a really cute sewing pattern. Both the pinafore and skirt are designed to be fully lined, so it's a really nice finish on this one. The pinafore's got this deep v-neck and princess seams, and then this fitted waist and a sort of A-line style skirt with these cute feature patch pockets. And the skirt is basically the bottom half of the pinafore. And they both um, um, have an invisible zip at the back, so you use that to get in and out of them. And there are two different lengths available, a mini skirt length and a knee length. Um, version and in terms of fabrics it's recommended with medium weight fabrics with body so I guess to hold the structure of the pinafore and the a-line skirt so I've never made the pinafore though I think it's really cute and I'd like to try it at some point I think I probably need to twirl it to make sure I got the right fit on the bodice but I've made the skirt a couple of times and I found it sewed up really nicely I do generally like Nina Lee instructions and find them really clear and easy to follow so I really enjoyed sewing up the Camden skirt and I've made two versions but I can only find one version. Um, I've been looking all over for my other version. I don't know where it is. I'm sure it'll turn up tomorrow just after I finish this video, as these things always do. But I've got one version to share here. Now, I think it's my favourite version, actually. I made it in this really lovely um, needle cord fabric from Guthrie Garn. It's a Robert Kaufman corduroy um, in this lovely rust colour. So it's quite a fine needle cord. But I find with the Robert Kaufman corduroys, they have a bit of body to them, um, so they're not sort of lightweight drapey needle cord. They are a bit substantial, so perfect for kind of A-line skirt where you want to show off the shape. So you can see here the patch pockets. There's a bit of top stitching there, which I always enjoy, although you can't see it very well on the corduroy. Um, and then I went for the mini length version, so you can see. And at the back, there's the invisible zip. Um, and I lined my version with a Cube Pro Benberg lining, which you can see here which I kind of fancied giving a try on this skirt because I'd heard a lot about it. Um, I'd heard that it was really perfect for lining because it's lovely and lightweight and slippery and breathable too. So I got this from, I think, Backstitch Shop. It was a long time ago, and if it's still available there, I'll link it down below. And it is lovely for lining. It is really lovely and slippery, but it was tricky to sew with. Um, I was glad I had my walking foot, and even then it didn't behave that well. Um, yeah, I didn't really enjoy sewing with it that much, although I do enjoy having it lining my skirt, and it is a really nice finish on the inside. But the corduroy was lovely to sew with, um, nice and stable, and just a really enjoyable sew, this one. I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. And the other version I made is another version I made in corduroy, but the second version was in a chunky black corduroy, I think maybe a 10 whale corduroy, so a lot chunkier than this kind of lightweight needle cord. And again, I went for the mini skirt version, and I'll put a picture of my black version too. I love wearing that one too. And in terms of sizing on the Camden skirt, I actually... Um, made a size 9 I think so I graded between size 8 and 10 which is pretty much bang on my measurement for the hips my hip measurement slightly in between the size 8 and 10 
And I, my waist would actually put me at a size eight, which is for 26 inches. I think I graded up to a size nine, so just slightly bigger, because I like the idea of um, sort of using this, wearing this skirt with sort of chunky jumpers that I could tuck in, and that is generally how I wear it. And um, I often take one of my nice cozy knit jumpers and tuck it into this one. So that's why I think I graded out slightly at the waist to give me a bit of extra room. So it's not totally fitted like the pattern is designed to be on me, just to be able to yeah, give me that room to tuck things into it a bit more. So anyway, I really like the Camden skirt pattern. I definitely get a lot of wear out of both my versions in the winter. I think it's a really nice um, shape for a winter skirt with A-line shape um, with a nice jumper themed with it. So the next pattern I tried by Nina Lee is quite a fun one. It's this one here, the Bakerloo blouse and dress pattern. It's a really cute blouse and dress pattern designed for woven fabrics and it features this oversized collar with a ruffle around the edge. Then you can make a blouse with bust starts and it's got a little button with a rouleau loop at the back and these voluminous sleeves with another little ruffle at the bottom. Or you can make the dress which then you basically crop off the blouse and add on a gathered skirt with optional inseam pockets too. And this is available in the full Nina Lee size range from size 6 to 28 and it's designed for woven fabrics, um, lightweight woven fabrics like cotton lawn, poplin, chambray or a lightweight needle cord. And it's a pattern when it first came out that I really wasn't sure about. I wasn't sure that the um, large collar was for me but I decided to give it a go and actually I really really enjoyed sewing and it's a really fun one to wear too. So I've made a couple of different versions and I'll show you my versions but I'll talk first of all about sizing on this one. Because I find Nina Lee patterns to be on the fitted size. I went with my size and I didn't want to risk um, going with a straight size 6, which is why my bust would put me, um, because my waist and hips are slightly larger. And I think on some pattern companies I can get away with going on my bust measurements and not grading out. But with Nina Lee patterns being fairly fitted, I thought I wouldn't do that. I'd go for the size 6 and the bust and grade out to 8 on the hips and waist and that's worked well I'm glad I did that I think otherwise it'll be a bit too snug the blouse particularly when it got down to the point of my hips and I have made a couple of adjustments on my versions first of all I made a twirl of the original arm and um, because I wanted to reduce the volume quite a bit and I have on all my versions reduced the volume because I thought with a big collar a big um, sleeve would be too much for me so I've reduced the volume and when I did that twirl I found that the bakerloo was a bit tight fitting around the armhole for me so I did widen the armhole slightly just by dipping the arm side a little bit um, and then adding a bit more space in the sleeve at that point which has made it more comfortable and on the dress version I also lengthened the bodice slightly which is quite a standard adjustment by, for me because I do have a longer torso so I lengthened my dress version by one and a half centimetres. So those adjustments I made in terms of sizing, but I'll show you my versions now. The first version I made was the blouse version. And here is my Bakerloo blouse, which I really love. I made it in this really pretty Liberty Tana lawn fabric. This one came from Minerva. They have quite a big range of Liberty Tana lawns. And I'll link this one if I can find it on there and it's still available. And then I went for a navy blue trim around the collar, just to sort of pick out the navy blue of the background of the lovely floral print. And as you can see, I narrowed the sleeves quite a lot, so they're not a balloon sleeve anymore. And I went for the little ruffle on the end, because I thought that was quite a cute detail. And I thought if I'm going for the narrow sleeve, I will add that little feature still, because I can probably, that probably won't wear me too much. And I'll show you, oh, this is the back actually. So I'll show you the little button with the rouleau loop at the back. And the neckline's all finished in bias binding, which is quite fiddly. Um, I wouldn't say this is like a beginner sew by any means. I did find it quite a fiddly sew. Um, but it does come together and give a really nice finish at the end, so it's worth kind of persevering with getting a nice neat finish around the edge there. So this is my blouse. It's really fun to wear, but I must admit I don't reach for it that often just because the collar makes it hard to layer kind of cardigans over the top. It kind of gets in the way slightly and it does feel a bit fancy for the average day when I'm going on the school run. But whenever I do wear it, I do really feel I'm happy in it really. It does make me feel happy wearing this one. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. So it's really one I should wear more actually because I do really love it. So that is the only blouse version I made. But I then went on to make a dress version because I thought it's such a cute pattern. It'd be nice to have a dress version too. So for my dress version, I went for a plain fabric. I went for a plain, lightweight, sort of baby cord style fabric. And this again came from Minerva. And if it's in stock still, I'll link it down below. It's a really lovely, soft baby cord. And I've made a few different garments in this baby cord range in different colours. It's nice and drapey, as you can see. So it's not stiff like a thicker cord I might be. So I added on a collar with this really cute brochure on grey glazed trim around the edge. I thought it'd be a really nice feature. Um, I then used some scraps actually for my first Bakerly blouse um, ruffle to make the bias binding on this one because I wanted something a little bit less um, bulky than the needle cord for the bias binding. 
I've got the little ruffle on the sleeve and I've got the skirt and for this version I added in waist ties just to cinch it a little bit of the waist and give it a bit more shape. And I've got a little ruler loop with button at the back which I think is a really cute little feature even if you can't see it because the collar kind of hides it. I did enjoy that little feature. And yeah, it came together really nicely and I think it's a really pretty shape this dress. I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like on. I just find um, how the shoulders sit and how the body sits where the bust starts are all seem to sort of suit my body shape, shape quite well so it seems to work quite well for me. Again a bit like the blouse I don't really reach this dress that much because it does feel a bit dressy for my average day but whenever I get out of the wardrobe like I'm looking at now thinking I really should wear it I'm going to get it on soon because it's so much fun. Again it does make me happy. The oversized collar I think is a really cute feature and actually it's quite cold at the moment here so this nice baby cord would be perfect for this weather to keep me nice and cosy. So that is my second version of the Bakerloo. And the final version I made is actually the Bakerloo dress but with a different collar. So it's here is my final version I made. I basically made up the Bakerloo dress, the same sleeve, the slightly reduced volume sleeve, the same bodice for the bust starts and same gathered skirt and also the um, waist ties again. I borrowed the collar from the Megan Nielsen Sudley pattern, which has this Peter Pan collar. because so I thought it would be cute to have a dress that's maybe a bit more understated in the collar area. But I could wear um, just a different take on the Bakerloo dress, actually. And it was quite fun adding a different collar. And I had to sort of figure out how to sort of meld the pattern pieces together, which took a bit of thinking, but it came together nicely in the end. So this is my final version. I made it in this really lovely viscose fabric, so a lightweight drapey fabric. And this is a viscose by Atelier Brunette. It's a really lovely one. This is another fabric that came from Minerva. Actually, all my Bakerloo makes a Minerva um, fabrics. I'll link this fabric down below because I think it is still in stock. It's really, really lovely fabric. Um, really lovely and drapey. It was nice to sew with too. Um, it's um, so as you can see on the inside, it's not kind of printed in this dark colour. It's that colour all the way through. So if you did happen to snag it at all, you wouldn't, shouldn't get one of those white snag lines um, from the inside colour, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, it's a really pretty fabric and I'll put a picture up of me wearing this one too. This is one I get out and when I want to feel a little bit dressy on a day and I really enjoy wearing it. It's really nice and comfy. All. And for this one, I just went for a simple elasticated cuff rather than the full ruffle. And that was only just because I didn't have quite enough of this fabric to squeeze out a ruffle. So I was trying to um, just squeeze out the whole dress out of a smaller amount of fabric. I didn't buy quite enough. So yeah, I couldn't, didn't have quite enough of that ruffle on the end, which is a shame. But I like the simple elasticated cuff too. I think that works absolutely fine on the Bakerloo dress as well so that is my final version so I'd really recommend the Bakerloo dress and blouse pattern for a really fun sew it might not be the most practical garment you ever make but yeah definitely uh, makes you happy when you get one of these out <laughs> so that brings me on to the final Nina Lee pattern I've tried to date and this one is a slightly more recent make for me I only tried this pattern earlier this year and it's this pattern here the Bloomsbury blouse pattern and although I've only tried it quite recently, it is one of Nina Lee's older patterns. And it's another one like the Camden skirt that's only available in the UK 6 to 20 size range. But it's a really pretty woven blouse pattern. I just love the look of it because of some of the interesting features on it. And um, I'll show you the line drawing so you can see all the details. It features this yoked bodice which has this ruffle going all the way around the front and back. And you can make that ruffle either as a smaller narrow ruffle or more oversized ruffle. Then it's got a button down back, it's got darts at the front and a three quarters length sleeve and there's also an optional ruffle on the stand up neckline and an optional ruffle on the cuff too. So it's really cute, I think it's Edwardian inspired and a little bit different, I haven't seen any other sewing patterns that are quite like this one so I was quite keen to try it. So I've made just the one version of the, this pattern, I'll show you my version here. So I made my version this really really pretty Atelier Brunette viscose crepe fabric. It's another one I got from Minerva. I think, again, this one's still in stock. I'll link it below. It comes in a few different colourways. I went for this um, black colourway with this really pretty sort of taupe colour on it. And this is a viscose crepe. And I'm not usually a big fan of the texture of viscose crepe, the kind of bumpiness of it. But actually, this crepe is such fine crepe. You would barely know it's a crepe, I think. It's got a really lovely soft feel to it. And because it's such a lovely drapey fabric, I wanted to go for the oversized ruffle because I thought that would work really well with a drapey fabric like this one. So that's what I went for. But I didn't add on a ruffle on the cuff or the collar, I just kept it quite simple so the one sort of yeah, um, bodice ruffle would sort of really stand out. And here's the back, so you can see it's got this button down back. And one adjustment I made actually when I was sewing this pattern was, um, I was worried this pattern was going to gape open quite a bit because this fabric is quite drapey and lightweight. So there's not designed to be a button on this part of the back, on the yoke, but I actually added, added a little strip of interfacing to the fabric and another button hole here. Just when I wear it, I don't have kind of like a little breeze or a gap here the back so that's one of those little adjustments I made for personal preference 
And then in terms of sizing, a bit like the Bakerloo blouse and dress, I graded between a six at the bust and a eight at the waist and hips based on my measurements again, because I didn't want it to come up too tight around the hips, because I know needlely patterns do come up on the fitted side. And I also did um, dip the arm side a little bit, just to give me that little extra room. I didn't twirl this one, but I just thought there's no harm in having a little bit more room there. So I added that just to make sure it didn't come up too tight. And I'm glad I did actually, because I think it's nice and comfortable there now. And I also just lengthen the bodice slightly, I think by maybe an inch and a half, just so it had just plenty long enough for me to be able to tuck into jeans or skirts, which is how I like to wear it. So it's a really nice, so another one that's a bit more fiddly and involved, I guess a bit like the Bakerloo pattern. I wouldn't recommend this for a beginner. Um, yeah, it is a bit fiddly and uh, yeah, I had to kind of really concentrate hard when I was sewing this one, but I really love how it, it comes together. I'm not sure whether I'll make loads of versions of this blouse because it feels like a bit of a standout piece and I don't reach for a huge amount. It does feel a bit dressy, but when I do wear it again, like the Bakerloo blouse and dress pattern, I do really enjoy wearing and it is quite cute with a skirt and a cardigan um, at this kind of wintry time of year. So those are all of the Nina Lee patterns I've tried today. So just four of her patterns, actually. I was surprised it wasn't more. But there are a few more of her patterns that I wanted to talk about and I've got my eye on or wanted to share with you for one reason or another. And the first pattern is the Portobello trousers and I'll put a picture up so you can see what they look like. This is a pattern I've admired um, ever since I came across Nina Lee. I think it's a really cute trouser pattern. So it's kind of a high-waisted trouser pattern and it has pleats at the front and darts at the back. So a really nice shape to it and then goes out into quite a wide leg and it's got, also got a concealed zip at the back. And this pattern comes in the full Nina Lee size range up to UK size 28. And I think if I still worked in office, I would be all over this pattern. I'd definitely have made at least a couple of versions to wear because I think it is perfect for wearing in the office. I'd love to team it, if I, went with, if I did work in the office, I'd love to team it with maybe a nice sort of viscose drapey blouse, like the blouse by the Avid Seamstress. I think that would work so well with these trousers. But at the moment with my current lifestyle where I don't dress up to go to work, I don't really have any use for a pair of trousers like this. So it's one of those patterns I think I'll just bear in mind. And if at some point in the future, I do start a job where it does require office-based work and that kind of formal work attire, I'll definitely be getting this pattern and giving it a try. So the next Nina Lee pattern I haven't got, but I wanted to talk about is her latest pattern release. And it's her first pattern she's released out of California. And I think it's got a bit of a different vibe to it than that of her London pattern. So I thought it'd be interesting to share it in this video. And it is the Carmel jumpsuit. And I'll put pictures up so you can see what it looks like. It's another pattern that's available in her full size range from UK 6 to 28. And it's designed as quite a loose fitting, relaxed jumpsuit. So I think that style is quite different to old London patterns, which I associate more with being more close fitting and more tailored. But yeah, the Carmel is described as a jumpsuit with a high relaxed waistline, roomy legs and four bodice variations. There's a low straight bodice variation with wide straps, a scoop neck version, a V-neck version and also a V-neck version with a collar added on. So quite a few different variations built into this one. So you could have a bit of fun, I think, yeah, choosing different options for different fabrics. And I've seen some really cute versions online of the Carmel, but I'm not sure it's for me. I'm not sure that a slightly oversized jumpsuit would really suit me. Although I think it'll be a really comfy, lovely one to have on a summer holiday. I don't think it'll be one I'm gonna try, but I'm really interested to see the future patterns that Nina does bring out with the Californian vibe. I'm really interested to see how a new place will inspire her future patterns and what direction she goes in. So I'm looking forward to yeah, keeping an eye out for her future pattern releases. One Nina Lee sewing pattern. I've had my own for absolutely ages and I haven't got it yet, but it's definitely one I'd like to try in the future. I'm sure I will try it in the future. It's the Nina Lee Q dress pattern, which is a really pretty summer dress and skirt pattern. It's available in the full size range from UK 6 up to UK 20. And I'll put the line drawings up so you can see what it looks like. So you can either make it as quite a fitted skirt with a button down front or as a strappy sundress with an optional cold shoulder detail or is more of a sort of 1940s style tea dress with ruched sleeves but it's quite fitted I like the button down front I think it's a really cute summery silhouette and I can see why it's been named the Q dress because it does um make you think of sort of strolling in Kew gardens in beautiful weather admiring all the flowers and plants there so definitely gives off that summery vibe this pattern I think so I really like to try this one. I like the idea of a fitted bodice. And I also really like the idea that this has an extension pack too with a couple more skirt versions because the skirt featured in the original pattern is this sort of fairly straight skirt with this high low hem. And I'm not sure that's quite my thing, but there's an optional 
um, add-on pack you can purchase which has a gathered skirt version I'll put that up so you can see what that looks like too and I really like the idea of having you go the strappy sundress version with the gathered skirt at the bottom to make into a cute sundress so I think that is maybe the version I'd try um, if or when I get this pattern so yeah, I think this pattern looks like a lot of fun. I've seen lots of people talking about how much they love the pattern, how nicely it comes together. And there might be one, I think I probably tried to twirl to get the fit of the bodice just right, but I think it'll be a really lovely one for summer. So that is definitely on my to sew list at some point in the future. So that brings me to the end of my review of Nina Lee sewing patterns. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing all about the patterns that I've made and how I found them and also the patterns that I have got my eye on to maybe make in the future. Thank you so much for watching and if you've enjoyed this video and like to watch some more of this series then I'll link all the other episodes I've done on other pattern companies below. Um, last week I released a video talking all about my closet core makes and I've also talked about my True Bias makes, my Friday Pattern Co makes and my Sew Over It makes as well. So yeah, I'll link them all down below but thank you very much for joining me for this video. Please do give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and I'll hopefully see you for another video soon but in the meantime I hope you have a great day and thanks again for watching. Bye!